Okay, hi guys. Um, I'm here in Vivan Cafe in uh, Karada, Baghdad. Let's go through a few tips. If you're planning to come to Iraq, let's think about what you need to do before departure. Number one thing you should do is um, sign up to the Facebook page of Iraqi Travelers Cafe. Uh, join the group. There are a wealth of information for newbies coming to Iraq. And they'll also assist with your arrival, um, settle you in. They can also offer you a discount rate at a hotel here, which is right next door to this cafe, which is really handy for uh, first time visitors. So do that. Uh, suss out DR and Osama. Both those lads are awesome and uh, speak fluent English. They know what we expect and they really take good care of you. Uh, they're really trying to help promote tourism here in Iraq and uh, they're your best friends when you arrive. Number two, in order to come to Iraq you need a PCR test. You need a PCR test when you depart from wherever you're coming from. It doesn't matter where you're coming from, you need a PCR test. And when you leave Iraq, this is very odd, but when you leave Iraq you also need a PCR test. You are not allowed into Baghdad International Airport without a PCR test. So if you're flying out of Baghdad, make sure you get a PCR test. Uh, check the links below. I've linked two places where you can get them and I've priced one of those places. So uh, definitely get onto that. Don't leave it till the last minute. It takes 24 hours to get the results. Number three, where to stay? Hala Hotel and Apartments, which is right next door to this very modern cafe, is a fantastic place to stay. Al Karada is a uh, quite up and coming suburb. It's not too far from the old city in the action, but it's in a great location in town. You'll be safe here and the hotel's really good value. Like I said, contact ITC, Iraqi Travelers Cafe. They can offer you a discount on hotel rates. You can also uh, contact Hala yourself, and, uh, but you will pay a bit more if you do that. So definitely suss them out before you book a hotel. Baghdad Airport. When you arrive at Baghdad Airport, you'll probably need a visa on arrival. So head to the visa desk. You can't miss it, great big sign. A tourist visa for 30 days is 77 US dollars. Try to have the right money because there's a good chance they won't offer you change. So $77 in cash is what you need. When you arrive, uh, fill in the application form, hand over your passport. Once the visa is issued, they'll ask you for the cash and you're done. Um, if it's not busy, it takes about 15 minutes. If it is busy, it can take up to two hours, especially if you've got a uh, unusual passport. Uh, check the Iraqi government page for who's entitled to visa on arrival, just in case you're not, okay? All right, you've got to get out of the airport and you've got to get to town. So Baghdad Airport is a little unusual in that only official taxis operate out of the airport. So you have to book one of those taxis. No other cars are allowed into the airport. So uh, I've linked a company down below that works out of the airport. They're very good. Some of their drivers can speak some broken English. Very friendly, very safe, especially for first timers and especially if you're female. I really recommend you get them. That gets you to your hotel and from there you can get your bearings. Uh, 45,000 dinars at this stage. This is September 2021. Uh, of course, prices are subject to change. Check the information below. Uh, they'll be linked there. If you've come to Iraq before, or if you're on a budget, you're a confident traveler in this part of the world, perhaps you want to do it more cheaply, you can. You can take the airport shuttle from the airport to Finas Square. And from Finna Square, you can take a regular taxi to town. Um, if you're arriving in the middle of the night, I don't really recommend you do that unless you feel really confident. Uh, but that's your choice. So two options to get to town. Uh, the first option is easier, especially when you arrive tired and whatnot. I really recommend it. Cruising. Okay then guys, I hope those tips helped you out some. Um, cheers and 
I'll keep these videos going and uh, help you on your first visit to Iraq. Solo female travel, budget travel, independent travel. That's what I'm focused on. So let's go. Iraq's great. Hey guys, I'm out and about again. I'm gonna bring you some more tips. Um, everyone who comes to Iraq or travels these days needs a SIM card, huh? We all want a SIM card, we all want some data. So, um, here in Iraq, in Baghdad, I suggest you go to Asia Cell. That is Asia Cell, one word. And um, they give SIM cards or sell SIM cards to foreigners. You need to go to their own branch though, not a third party shop. Okay, not a third party mobile shop because when you go they take your photo they also take your fingerprint and a copy of your passport so make sure you have your passport with you the sim card itself costs about three thousand dinars and five gig of data which is enough for most travelers on a week or two week trip um, costs fifteen thousand dinars so eighteen thousand all up will get you five gig of data cheers Okay, one more thing uh, you'll be wanting to know about when you come is money. Um, of course, in Iraq, they use dinars, Iraqi dinars. And although a lot of uh, prices are quoted in US dollars, they actually expect, in 99% of cases, to be paid in dinars. So if they say it's 50 US dollars, they mean the conversion of that into dinars, okay? So you do need quite a lot of dinars on you. It's more expensive here in Iraq than you might imagine, okay, when you come. Food and uh, local taxis are quite cheap, but entry fees to some sites are quite expensive, like Babylon, for example. It's around 20 US dollars, 18 US dollars, something like that. And also, um, any day trip you do out of town. So if you organize a private car or a taxi, or you get a uh, on a tour, a shared tour, it's going to be quite pricey, and they will quote you in US dollars, but they will want payment in dinar. Okay, so you may find you run out of cash. I I suggest you bring um, around about US hundred dollars per day if you're a mid-budget traveler, mid-range budget kind of traveler. Um, that'll cover your accommodation, a tour. A um, couple of local taxis and two meals a day. Um, some days you will spend a bit more when you go out of town, but on other days when you just go to the old city or the markets, you'll spend a bit less. So it kind of evens out at around 100 US a day. It's a nice platform with a little bit of leeway. If you do find you run out of cash, oh by the way, there's lots of currency exchange shops. So that's not a problem. However, a lot do seem to be closed on Fridays, so don't get caught out. Um, there are two, it took me quite a bit of uh, exploring to find out, but there are two um, ATMs that you can use. They need to be international banks, okay? The local Iraqi banks do not take international cards. So look for Assure Bank from Jordan or Al Arabiya Bank from Dubai. Both of those take international cards and you shouldn't have any trouble getting cash out of those ATMs. I'll link um, a sure ATM down below, it, down in the description. It's the one I've used and I had no problems with it whatsoever. When I tried to use Iraqi ATMs, it didn't accept my card, okay? It just said transaction unable. So bring approximately 100 US a day if you're a mid-range traveler. If you're gonna use shared taxis, you, you don't plan on going out of Baghdad too much, you can probably get away with around 70 US a day. But you do need 100 to really enjoy the country, I think. So you don't have to penny pinch. Thanks for listening. If you do end up staying at Hala Hotel and Apartments, there's a great falafel shop behind me. Um, falafel sandwiches with lots of salad are only 1,000 dinars each. So that's like 65 US cents or about 90 New Zealand cents. So you can't beat that for a cheap meal. The guys next door are really friendly too. It's a great place to uh, get a cheap eat. It's uh, only like three minute walk, five minute walk um, from Huller Apartments. So I really recommend you check it out. Uh, it's called Al Baraka, 
Al Baraka Falafel. If you can't find it on Google Maps, check with the hotel. Someone will know about it. It's really popular. Okay, so this is a chai man that I come and see almost every day. He makes me a chai. It's right next to Al Baraka Falafel. So if you come here, you can also get a good um, chai. Lots of cardamom. He also put some ginger in it. Come, come. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Cien. Yeah. Cien. Nice to meet you, Cien. <laughs> He's shy. You're so shy. You want to be on YouTube? My name is Ennis. Ennis? My name is Cien. Cien. My name is Abbas. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for the chai, sir. Just a few tips too to finish up. Um, is a rock safe? Well, on the whole, yes. Um, there is, however, always the risk of uh, wrong time, wrong place, wrong place, wrong time. Um, and that's going to be here for a while yet. You know, tourism is new. The war hasn't long finished. Um, there are still some dangerous elements around. So, but Baghdad itself is much safer than you think. Honestly, um, I've walked the streets of the old city, markets, up and down Karada, um, by myself, solo female traveler, and I haven't had any problems whatsoever. All I've had is kindness, generosity, and friendliness. Um, it's quite incredible. Remember too, although there are many checkpoints and at times they can be a little annoying or frustrating because there are so many, remember the army and the police are here for our good. They're here to protect us and the locals. And so even though it mightn't be pretty, it's a necessity and I for one am very thankful for it. And lastly, remember the guys at ITC, Iraqi Travelers Cafe. They're your first point of contact and they're um, an excellent source of advice and information. So once you, once you touch base with them, use them while you're here. Um, they're more than happy to help and um, they're your best friend on the ground, really. All right, I'm gonna enjoy my milkshake and um, I'll catch you in the next session.